Hello, art friends. My name is Fleshwad, and today, I will be reading another two Junji Ito stories for you. If you missed my first Junji Ito video, I will leave a link for you in the description so that you can check it out after this video. I will be using both fandom and wiki to read already written summaries of each story, and I will leave those links below as well. However, I do recommend actually reading the short story manga for both stories, as the drawings are so worth it. Sit back, listen to a couple of creepy stories, and watch me draw my favorite panel from each story. The Long Hair in the Attic Chiemi's boyfriend breaks up with her, telling her that while she tried to look her best for him, he still isn't satisfied and believes that they don't belong together. When she returns home, her sister, Eri, greets her, telling her that their house has rats in the attic. Eri notices that Chiemi is depressed, but doesn't know why. While burning a picture of her ex, Chiemi remembers back when he asked her to grow her hair out for him. She then falls asleep, crying. Chiemi wakes up to find a dead rat entangled in her hair. While washing it out, she decides once and for all to cut it off. Later, while Eri goes to find a scissors to give Chiemi a haircut, she and her mother hear Chiemi screaming. When they rush upstairs, they find her decapitated body lying on the floor, with the head having vanished. The police are called, but no leads are found. A week later, Chiemi's ex is awakened by a phone call with no one answering. He feels responsible for causing her death, believing that she committed suicide. He then starts hearing the sound of grinding teeth, followed by another phone call. Sometime later, Eri asks her father for a flashlight so that she can check the attic for rats. Eri's father insists on going to check himself, while Eri warns him of his heart condition. After a while, Eri's father doesn't answer any of her calls. She goes to check on him, only to find him slumped against the wall, dead, of a heart attack. When she looks to see what caused him to die, she finds Chiemi's head, suspended from the rafters by its hair, which has grown to a tremendous length. Eri tries to take the head down, only to find the hair is covered in blood. The hare then opens the head's eyes, and it starts grinding its teeth. It then unhooks itself from the rafters, and slithers out of the house. Eri realizes that her sister's hair came to life and killed her because it didn't want to be cut off. The head slithers off to Chiemi's ex's house, where it torments him by slowly coming through the cracks in the walls. The Long Dream Dr. Kuroda, a celebrated neurosurgeon, expresses severe doubt when a patient named Tetsuro Makoda is admitted, complaining of increasingly long dreams, although his assistant, Dr. Yamaichi, believes there may be some truth to Makoda's complaints. Another patient at the hospital, Mami Takashima, who was admitted for treatment for a benign tumor, begins experiencing a heightened fear of death, and has a harrowing encounter with Makoda, who wanders the halls at night, too afraid to sleep. Though he continues to believe Makoda's symptoms are just hallucinations, Dr. Kuroda agrees to admit him, and decides to study his symptoms in detail. Using an EEG machine, Kuroda discovers that when Makoda sleeps, there are brief periods when he enters rapid eye movement sleep, 
Spanning just a few seconds at a time, during this period, his brainwaves become erratic, and his eyes thrash about wildly, only to suddenly stop. In that brief moment of REM, he is in the depths of his condition. With each passing night, the perceived length of Makoda's dreams seem to be increasing, from months, to years, to decades, and then to centuries, and often the experiences he suffers while dreaming are extremely unpleasant. As his dreams continue to lengthen, Makoda begins to experience amnesia when he wakes up, often having to be reminded by Kuroda as to why he was admitted to the hospital. His mannerisms and intonation also began changing, as if he was speaking as a person from a different century. Makoda becomes pale and gaunt over time, as his illness worsens. Makoda continues to suffer from his long dreams, and eventually undergoes extreme physical mutations, as his dreams become several millennia long within his mind. It is as if Makoda is really living the length of time he perceives his dreams are, somehow experiencing evolution while still alive. The psychological effects of his condition have also continued to worsen, to the point that he can no longer differentiate his dreams from reality. Believing that Takashima is his wife from within the dream world, a severely mutated Makoda accuses Kuroda of trying to interfere in their relationship upon waking and accosts Takashima. Shoving the doctor aside, Makoda runs to Mami's room with Kuroda in hot pursuit. Terrified, Mami accuses Makoda of being death. Before Kuroda manages to intervene, Makoda comes to his senses and asks, what happens to the man who awakens from an eternal dream? Makoda's mutations continue to worsen, and eventually, he barely resembles a human at all. One night, while Kuroda continues to study him, Makoda enters REM sleep again, and finally experiences an eternal dream. Kuroda, who had himself fallen asleep due to fatigue, awakens to see the result. With his spirit fleeing his body, Makoda crumbles away into dust, leaving behind strange red crystals. Shortly afterwards, Takashima confides to Yamaichi that her fear of death is lessening, but that she too is starting to experience long dreams, theorizing that the illness Makoda suffered from is contagious. Yamaichi consults Kuroda on the matter, who explains that he had been using the crystals on Takashima in secret, Having realized they were the secret to Makoda's condition, Yamuichi is horrified by this, stating that it desecrates the souls of the dying. But Kuroda reasons that humanity will have no reason to fear death if they have the option of eternal dreams instead. And once again, that was The Long Hair in the Attic and The Long Dream by Junji Ito. I hope you enjoyed my reading and the art. If you did, please make sure to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't. Leave a creepy comment below. I always appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching, art friends. Until the next video. Bye.